but in addition we have some special rules too and one of them is the shield wall Hi guys, Christopher Norse Rain. Today I'm looking at Nefatafel, the Viking board game. And full disclaimer, I've just started playing this game, so I am by no means an expert, but I've learned the basics and I'm going to talk to you guys about the rules and also the history of the game. So Nefatafel, it directly translates to Nefa, which is fist and tuffle which is table so fist table we don't really know what this means to be honest maybe it's when you would lose and you would slam your fist into the table i do that all the time um, so that might be the case we don't really know it's also known as the king's table and tablut which is the Sami version of the game and it's also been referred to as Viking chess, but it's it's not really like chess So that's a bit misleading in my opinion and the game came into existence in Scandinavia uh, long before the Viking Age actually and It was from Scandinavia brought to other countries through pillaging and trading so you can find it also in um, Iceland and the British Isles and Ireland, I believe also they have found it in Ukraine, so it just spread out from Scandinavia. It's believed that the game is based upon the Roman game Ludus Latrunculorum. People from North Europe would serve in the Roman army, bring the game back to their homeland, add a few local adjustments to the gameplay, and voila, Nafatafel is born. Nefatuffel is an asymmetrical board game for two players. The size of the board game also comes in different sizes, ranging from 7x7 to 19x19 squares. And we don't know exactly how this game was played, unfortunately, but it's likely that there would have been many local sets of rules, and even today there are 20-something ways to play it. I'm not going to go through all the different rules how to play Nafatafel, but I'm going to focus on the Copenhagen rules, which is considered to be the official Nafatafel rules today. Like I said, we have very limited information about how the game was played back in the day. We do, however, have a description from Carl von Linné from the 1700s. Linné is known for formalizing the modern system of naming organisms, but during a visit to the Sami people, the indigenous people of North Scandinavia, he made records of a board game that they played called Tablut, which is the Sami version of Nefatafel. Nefatafel was still played in Lapland well into the 1700s, but in other areas, the heathen game was replaced by chess, in the 12th century. We have quite few archaeological finds of Nefatafel game boards because these were often made out of wood, but we have found several gaming pieces as these were made out of hard materials like bone or glass. Here's a piece of a game board from the Goksta ship burial and it's believed that this is how the board looked originally. We also have several references to Nefotafel in saga literature, including Orkneinga saga, Fritjof saga, and Harvarvar saga, and also from Vuluspo. So it's apparent that board games were an integral part of the culture and that mastering the game would give you a certain social status. It was a sign of intellect. The game was taken very seriously, and one record tells of how King Canute the Great killed an earl after a round of board games. 
I'll explain the rules in a minute, but in case you're new to the channel, I'm posting Viking-related content every Sunday about Viking history, Norse mythology, reporting on Viking news in the media, looking at Viking culture today, and also traveling to historical places from the Viking Age. If you enjoy that kind of content, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a comment for the algorithm. It helps me out making more of this kind of content, and I really do appreciate the support. Okay, now let's look at the rules of the game following the Copenhagen rules, and I'm going to use a standard 11 by 11 square game board. The white team starts in the middle of the board, while the black team starts on each of the four sides. The goal of the white team is to get the king to safety on one of the four corners, either here, 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 or here. The goal of the black team is to capture the king before he gets to safety. The black team, the attacker, always starts the game. You move the pieces like the tower in chess, so either this way or this way. And you can move the pieces as far or as short as you want to. The same applies for the king. You cannot move the pieces diagonally, nor can you jump over other players. Only the king is allowed to occupy the corner squares, these ones. The same applies for the middle square, the king's throne. No other game pieces can occupy this square, but they can move through it if the king is not there. As with chess, you capture the other pieces, but instead of occupying the same square as the enemy like this, you would need to flank the enemy. So you would need to come in from each side like this. Or also, if you were like this, you would get this piece. However, if you move one of your own pieces between enemy players like this, you will not be captured and you can basically just move on. The four corner squares and the center square can also be used to flank the enemy. So if the enemy is standing here and you move your player here, so the enemy is between your game piece and the corner square, then you capture the enemy. To avoid stalling the game, you can't repeat the same move more than three times. If you do, you're gonna lose. And these are the basic rules to Nefotafo. But in addition, we have some special rules too. And one of them is the shield wall. So if you have a row of enemy players, let's say that the white are the enemies, you have them flanked on the, from the front and also from the sides. So if we move in, okay, let's say that we're moving in this one here, then they are flanked on three sides. Then you actually get to capture all of these players. Now, if the king is also getting captured, if he's amongst the, the row of players. He doesn't get captured, but all the other players are. Another special move is the exit fort, which is a win for the defending team. So if the king is protected on all sides and he is able to move and he is in contact with the board edge, like this. He escapes and the white team wins. So for the black team to win, they need to capture the king, but he is more powerful than the other players. So instead of just flanking him from two sides, 
you actually need to flank him from all four sides in able to capture him. And there is also another way for the black team to capture or to win. If they are surrounding the king and all the white players, which they are not doing right now. Now, now the king and all the defenders are surrounded. So now Team Black wins. And that is how you play Nefetafel. It's quite different depending on whether you're defending or attacking. So I recommend playing both teams for one round. As I said, we were using the Copenhagen rules now, but if you've been using a, another set of rules that you would recommend, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any further questions, pop a question in the comment box. Wrapping it up there. Thanks for watching, guys, and have fun playing Nefatafel. I'll see you on the next one.